realized I wanted to be an artist was when I was about three years old in 1964. I, um, I'm a preacher's kid, so my dad's a Southern Baptist minister, and it was in West Texas, in Shellwater, Texas, and I always would get stuck on the front row. Every Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh, Wednesday evening prayer meeting, I was there on the front row, and to keep from fidgeting, my mom would give me uh, pencil and paper. And I would go to town, I would just get busy, and I would draw on the back of these bulletins. I started out on the pews of the church, and it escalated. You know, it, then I went to elementary school and became the class artist. And, and when I got into junior high school, uh, I had my first weekly cartoon strip with the Winter Garden Times. Uh, I was painting mural after mural, it seemed like, in my friends' bedrooms. You know, we would uh, basically copy an album cover, one of their favorite album covers. and. You know, probably by the time I was out of high school, I'd done like maybe 20 murals. Um, so I've, I've really been doing this commercial illustration all my life. All my life. I even got a, when I was doing the weekly cartoon for the Winter Garden Times, the way that would happen is my dad, of course, I was just a youngster, so I wasn't really into what was happening as far as on the local and national scene, but my dad was. And so he would follow what was going on. He'd say, okay, son. Uh, this is what you draw this week and so he'd tell me you know what would be great for that week and I would do it and we'd turn them in and they'd print those things it was amazing and uh, one of my dad's friends was a presidential aide at the time when Gerald Ford was president 1974 maybe I and uh, he took one of the cartoons that I had done of Gerald Ford up to him and gave it to Gerald Ford well about a week later I get this letter from Betty Ford and it's, you know, on the return address, it simply says the White House, you know, and uh, and she basically said, "Thank you, Greg, for the the nice cartoon you did of Jerry," you know, and so uh, that was pretty neat. I still have that letter somewhere. Acrylic when I paint, and then I, I love pencil. I love charcoal, uh, pen and ink, uh, pastel color pastel. Uh, not oil pastel, but when I was like seven years old, and we'll talk about this, I, I painted in oil because my folks gave me oil painting lessons. I don't paint any oil anymore, but um, I'd like to get back into it. But no, acrylics when I'm painting because there's no smell, it's easy to clean up, that kind of thing. It's just like the classic medium. You know, and if I do paint in oil again, I'll paint really small because I want to learn to paint thick. You know, like the old masters, man, they would glob it on and it just looks so cool. And it, I like the smell of it too. It's nice. Also over the years, I've, I've, uh, I've copied many styles and all of the, the famous masters, uh, Diego Rivera, Thomas Hart Benton, uh, Vincent Van Gogh, these guys knew how to paint. Those are my idols. And, and I've copied their styles. And, and because of this, it's a good way to learn when you, when you copy other artists' styles. It's a, it's a learning process. During the day, and this is when I was just doing freelance, just freelance illustration. And I would be working during the day, and my mailman, Brian McQueen, would come by. And when he would deliver my mail, he would always look in to see what I was doing. And, and every day he would look in and check it out, see what I was doing. Finally, I just said, Brian, come on in, you know, check this out. And Brian had a real interest in art. He was an artist himself. And so we became friends and he would come over and uh, we would paint together. And I would teach him what I knew and we were really enjoying it. And one day Brian, you know, he had, I believe, two black labs and one was named Jody and uh, he showed me a picture of his black lab, Jody, And she was, you know, just sitting there like that. And uh, one evening I was looking at it and I thought, you know, I want to do this picture of Jody, But I want to do it in a, in, in a way that it doesn't look like in the photograph. I want to do it like with an N.C. Wyeth style. And I think because of living in the Southwest, it, I was influenced by the kind of styles that come out of the Southwest. And so, uh, sure enough, I just went to town with the pastel and did a pastel study of it first. And I thought, and one thing that we learned in, in art school through our illustration teacher is, 
she would say, always put a twist to it. You know, don't just don't just draw what you see, but maybe add a twist to it. So, the twist that I added to the black dog was I um, put a big eagle feather in the back of his hair, and a giant golden earring hoop on the ear, and uh, added a little bit of scarring across the face just to make it, you know, look like a tough black dog that's been through battle and war and the kind of N.C. Wyeth-y stuff that they go through. And I think it worked out pretty good. You know, I wanted to keep it a little looser than, than what I worked at. And uh, yeah, when people see it, they're, they're pretty surprised. And they always ask, you know, what, what's the gold hoop in the ear? Did, did that dog really have a golden earring? The baseball series started out in Santa Fe too. Um, I love old time baseball. I, that's when baseball was real, was back when Jackie Robinson played, Ty Cobb, uh, Bob Gibson, uh, Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, those, those were my heroes. So I wanted to paint baseball because baseball is hot. It's, it's, it's like a number one hot ticket right now. But it's the old time baseball that I wanted to do. And I wanted to do it different than anybody else has done baseball. I, I wanted to take the very stylized approach, like the Thomas Hart Benton, kind of Diego Rivera uh, style, and, uh, and really stylize it up. Now, for example, the Jackie Robinson painting, um, that's titled, He Floated Like an Angel. Because I had seen one of the quotes that someone that was actually watching him play, he was running so fast around the bases that he floated like an angel, and that's why I titled it, He Floated Like an Angel, but it really has two meanings. Um, when you look at the painting, you see the fire that's blazing off of Jackie's shirt, his jersey. Well, it's because he was so fast that he, he was just on flames, he was so fast. But it also has the double meaning of Jackie broke the color barrier back in those days, and this image is of the 1955 World Series. And I know that Jackie caught a lot of flack for being one of the first black players to go into the professional leagues. And those were bad days back then. I mean, they were ridiculed and worse. And so, uh, you know, you're looking at a black man between two white men on fire. So it kind of has a double meaning for that particular piece. Um, the Ty Cobb. Uh, I've done two Ty, Ty Cobb pieces, and the uh, one of them is called Second Inning, to where it shows Ty Cobb just beating the living daylights out of one of the other players of the opposite team, just just you know just grabbing them and beating the living tar out of them. And the, Ty Cobb did this kind of thing. Uh, I wanted to show the baseball series. I wanted to show a view that you never did really see. I wanted to show more of the truth. Um, having that twist added to it also. Uh, the other Ty Cobb piece I did was called An Eye for an Eye. And it shows Ty Cobb sliding in and doing this classic slide to where he would put his cleats up and really attack whoever he was sliding into, not just to hit the base, but maybe to cause some physical damage. And, and we know he did that. So the, um, the image is uh, Ty Cobb sliding into home. He's got his foot raised. Uh, he's coming in contact with the catcher. His foot, his right leg is raised. He's getting ready to take the ear off the catcher when he kicks out. He's just going to catch him right here under the ear and just really do some damage. But at the same time, the catcher has the baseball, that hard baseball, and he's, he's tagging him out. It's clear because he is shoving that baseball as hard as he can, right down to Ty Cobb's, well, private parts. And so that's why it's called an eye for an eye. You know, if you're going to hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. When they see the image, I want them to uh, have it kind of embedded, imprinted onto their mind. And I think that if that happens, you've done something powerful. Um, a good piece of illustration has the ability to move people into action and that's what I hope that my work does regardless if it's done in a, a realistic style 
or a stylized style. Um, that's what good illustration, that's what good graphic design does. It has the power to even move a whole nation into action. And I think that's what we as artists want to see happen. That's kind of the ultimate goal.